Happy Friday, February 28th. Hmm, almost the end of February already. I'm Paul Hukalak. Lisa's off today. The St. Albert Merchants are playing Game 4 of Round 2 in the CJHL playoffs. The city's annexation negotiations continue with Sturgeon County. And now there's a newsletter for those who want to stay up to date. And Memory Roth talks to the Mural Mosaic team in this week's Art in the City. All that and always so much more. But first, an 86-year-old man was killed in a collision on Ray Gibbon Drive last Friday. The accident took place around 2.40 p.m. north of the intersection of Ray Gibbon Drive and McKenney Avenue. Last Friday, February 21st at approximately 2.40 p.m., St. Albert RCMP Fire and EMS responded to a two-vehicle collision. Now, the head-on collision occurred between two trucks, resulting in an 86-year-old male occupant from St. Albert being declared deceased on scene. The female occupant of his southbound truck and a lone male occupant of the northbound truck were taken to hospital with serious life-threatening injuries. St. Albert RCMP, along with an RCMP collision analyst, continue to investigate. Well, the countdown continues. We are only three weeks away until the Night of Artist Gala, where we'll be live broadcasting the Friday night's event. Now, Night of Artist runs from March 20th, 21st, and 22nd, of course, at the Enjoy Center. Memory Roth was down at the Enjoy Center earlier this week to talk to the mural mosaic team of Louis Lavoie, Phil Allais, and Paul Lavoie in this week's Art in the City. I'm here at the Enjoy Center in the Moonflower Room with uh, Louis Lavoie, Phil Allain, Paul Lavoie, who are the mural mosaic team. Welcome guys. Hi. It's great Hi. to see you. So I'm really excited to interview you because the mural mosaic is just such an amazing um, thing that you guys do. And so I would like to know, I would like to actually tell everybody else what it's all about. So first of all, can you tell me how you guys are connected? Like how did you meet? Or well, obviously, two of you met a lot sooner. <laughs> <laughs> well, me and, me and this guy are yeah, we're brothers. brothers. Right. So. <laughs> Paul seems to be like the, one of these guys that kind of, um, I don't know, he sees, he sees that I'm alone and he goes, this guy needs a friend. <laughs> <laughs> and so he kind of teams up with me on almost everything we do. Okay. But uh, this guy here, Phil, um, we, we've made connections that go all the way back to grade school even. But uh, I think the way we Ooh. first we first met was on the streets. Yeah, we were... Uh, well, it's just where the grade school thing just made me have. I was actually I think in Paul's grade grade one class. We oh, don't even really? know that for sure. We yeah. think so. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Nice yeah. We we need a classroom picture to prove. <laughs> but anyways, uh, um, uh, I was actually uh, doing uh, back in I think it was like 1997 or 96 or something like that. Lewis and I were both um, uh, trying to sell our artwork as in any way we could. We we didn't do the mainstream gallery scene back then. We primarily just went out and like a bunch of peddlers and just stood on the street with our artwork and uh, one day Lewis and I were both on I think it was St. Thomas Moore Street I think St. Thomas Moore is that St. Thomas, Thomas, is that what it is? St. Thomas, Thomas Moore was a, okay. was a saint St. <laughs> Thomas okay St. Thomas Street that's it um, and we were both out on the street um, selling our artwork and uh, I was just starting this the night of artists up and um, and I said man hey your stuff's pretty good so it's amazing, but uh, you know, would you would you like to be in one of my shows? And uh, and uh, it was kind of like um, it was like the introduction of uh, of chocolate to peanut butter because oh. it was like this, uh, you know, we started doing the shows together, and then um, then it all kind of started to, to morph into much bigger things. So. Wow. Well, my recollection's great. different. I, <laughs> Yours is? I was what trying to compete with this guy. I'm thinking, okay, $500 for a painting. I'm going to mark mine down to $200. <laughs> and they went like that, and I was selling way more art because I kept lowering my price. And, well, you know, that was very no, smart. I, <laughs> smart marketing. Wait a minute, that's a Bugs Bunny show. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, who was the brainchild behind Mural Mosaics? Well, once again, it's it's uh, it was one of these things where Lewis and I were already doing these shows together, and um, and I went for a walk one day in St. Albert, and, and I was walking down by um, what used to be Profiles Gallery, which is now what's it called now? I don't even know. Um, uh, art gallery. 
Art, okay, oh, hang on a second. No. Art Gallery of St. Albert. Art Gallery nope. of St. Albert? No, it was yeah. actually down by, what's that building? The Art Beach. Art, Art, Art Beach. Beach. Oh, the Art Beach. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The old Art Beach. Yeah, it's no, it's, a, no, no. it's external affairs now. Oh. Yes, ex we're, okay, we're, external affairs is right okay. now. So down, right down by the river, I was out for a walk down one of the paths, and, and um, when I'm walking along, I, I look over and I see this mural on the side of, of uh, whatever external affairs building is called now. And, uh, and I look at it, and it's like the, this face of, of, of David by Michelangelo, but it wasn't just the typical David mural. It was, it was like made up of all these little, little pictures. And I was like, what is that? And so I wander up to it, and I look more closely, and I see that they're all individual little paintings. And I, I couldn't believe it. So I, I, I go up to Lewis and say, yeah, man, you have to, I, I saw this mural. Down, it, it was the coolest thing. It's this mural of David made up of all these pictures. I go, well, I did that. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> So, so then, um, then I, I um, at the time because I was doing Night of Artists, I said, "Hey, why don't we why don't we do a, a mural where we where we get all my Night of Artists people to come come paint the tiles?" And he's like, "Nah, that'll never work." And and, uh, and we we really because you know he he did all the paintings himself before, and and to give up that kind of uh, freedom to other artists to create the tiles. Right. And, but I always believe he can pull off anything, and and uh, <laughs> and then. Of course, Paul. Uh, Paul. <laughs> I figured, you know, artists are, you know, they're contentious people. They're all going to fight and <laughs> argue and say, you know, oh, it needs to be red, I, you know, and, and I, I'm going to need blue tiles or something, right? So I didn't think it would work. Oh. Well, I am really happy that you guys came out today and, and agreed to the interview, and we can learn a little bit more about the mural mosaics. And um, people can come down to the Night of Artists and buy the book. Um, will you be there or? You. Yeah, well, Lucy's gonna do a live painting out here. So, oh yes, yeah, you, actually, so. you should um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, leave comments in the in the. Do <laughs> you just have a comment thing <laughs> of what you would like to see done for the Night yeah. of Artists, and I'll oh. maybe paint that. Well, that's great. Yeah, so there's another reason to come to the Night of Artists. So thank you very much, guys. I wish you all the best luck. Um, I think that you guys will keep doing this for years and years. I hope, and we'll see murals everywhere. So when um, you go to the um, service place, you can go into the arena, and on the wall you'll see the beaver, which is the St. Albert's mural. That's right, that's this one right here. We'll see if we can find it. Time, time. <laughs> here we go, oh, that's more page, the page, it's the next one. There it is. There it is, yeah. there's the beaver. That's in service place here in St. Albert, beautiful St. Albert. Yeah. Built on the beaver's dam. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot, guys. This has been fun. Thanks, Memory. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Memory Roth with Art in the City, and this has been TV7.ca. Merch Madness continues tonight at the Jerome McGinley Arena. The merchants are hosting the Beverly Warriors in Game 4 of the CJHL Playoffs. And after losing the home opener, the merchants have come back to take a 2-1 lead in the best of five series. Puck drop is at 8 o'clock, and the merchants would like to remind fans to get there early for the best parking. Overflow parking, of course, is also available on the south side of the arena. Now also, the St. Albert merchants would like to remind you of their annual Merch Madness Golf Tournament coming up on June 26. A portion of the proceeds for this event will be going to the Jessica Martell Foundation. This tournament is sure to be a sellout, and hopefully they can make their donation to the JMF a memorable one. Now, for information about this upcoming golf tournament or our very own St. Albert Merchants, check out their website. Our very own city and Sturgeon County's Annexation Negotiating Subcommittee met for the first time in 2020 on January 27th to discuss the city's proposed annexation of a portion of land from Sturgeon County. At the meeting, the subcommittee reviewed the feedback that was gathered at the November stakeholder engagement sessions and further discussed the preliminary negotiated annexation boundary and affected roadways. The city is working to provide greater clarity on the public's role in the annexation process, including the city's engagement events and the municipal government's board's formal hearing process for the public. Feedback and questions are welcomed at any point throughout the process. The city also has an annexation newsletter that is, that is available through sign up for those who are looking to stay informed on the annexation process. To sign up for this newsletter, 
Go to the city's website and search Annexation Newsletter. Well, perhaps you've seen him scoot, scoot, scooting around town, wearing his iconic bow tie. 81-year-old Roly Boy Sell moved to St. Albert a few years ago after suffering a stroke. I've been here just shy of two years. I had the stroke in, in Kelowna and my children wanted to look after me and so they brought me to my son's place and well my, ch my children didn't want me to have a car anymore since I'd, I had to forfeit my license for six months anyhow and uh, I got tired of being around the house all the time so I have a, a very nice handicapped scooter. It's, uh, it has a top speed of 50k which if I ever find out how to make it go a little faster I probably will. Uh, and it has a range of 50k and I get around uh, almost every day, every nice day and I've, I've taken it out in the, um, in the snow but it's, it's not as nice running around in the snow. Now for the past year, Roly has been collecting and repairing watches. He scoots himself down to Value Village and buys all the watches he can get his hands on. He estimates that he has collected over 800 watches in only the past year. Because I needed something to do. I'm 81 years old and I took this up at age 80. So I've been doing it for about a year and that's how long it took me to collect that number of watches. But it, it keeps me busy. I just lay on my bed and uh, pop them open and if I can, if I have the right battery then I, I put the batteries in. I, I had a dear uncle who was a real watchmaker and back in the mid 70s I used to drive a Volkswagen uh, bus. I wasn't a hippie but I had a Volkswagen bus and I had four kayaks that I had made myself. And we came out from, uh, Cal we lived in Calgary at that time, and we went to visit him in Kelowna, and that's what got us to move out there eventually, was uh, having family there as well. And uh, we arrived at his place uh, in the afternoon and uh, went in to visit with him, and he said, Roland, come on downstairs to my watch room. I've got a watch that I'm having a problem with and I, I suspected something was up right from that moment because he knew lots more about watches than I did and uh, so we went down to his watch room and he said here try this one on I'm having trouble with the clasp so I put it on and it went on just fine I said no it's, too, it's all right and I went to take it off and he said I want you to have that watch she said, I'm sick and tired of you wearing those cheap, high-class Timexes. <laughs> so we had our visit with my uncle, and then we went from there to the lake with our kayaks, and we kayaked around. And after, after the kayak uh, outing, I looked at the watch that he gave me, and it was half full of water. Well, we immediately went back to my uncle's place and showed him Uncle Bruce. Um, Look at this. He said, what have you done? I said, well, my cheap high-class Timex doesn't get water in it. <laughs> Roly's trademark bow ties were handmade by his late wife that he wears as a tribute to her. Every time my wife made a new dress, she made me a tie that matched. I'm a very lucky man. I didn't have to buy a dress in more than 30 years. Um, but we were known in Kelowna as the... Uh, the couple that match for 30 years. I have 24 ties of hers left. That uh, She passed away on, on the 1st of April 2013, so it's been six years. And uh, I, I, I wear her ties every day. I get compliments every day, especially on the bow tie. When I go to church on Sunday, I wear my suit and whatever tie I feel like putting on that day and uh, I get stopped and uh, people ask me about it and 
it's been very, um, my, maybe my wife shouldn't have done this. There's been more women have talked to me because I've been wearing a bow tie. Without this tie, I become invisible. I become just like the other, anybody else on the street. But I get uh, as many as two and three compliments a day riding around town. It's, it hasn't been any kind of a burden wearing the, her, her ties to honor her. We'd like to thank Roly Boisell for sharing his story with us. And if you'd like to check out his collection of watches, they're available at Coral Collective. Well, did you know that you can get your arcade on and that St. Albert has a virtual reality arcade? Now, if you're not a gamer, Game Over also has dozens of VR simulations. The VR simulations allow you to travel, for instance, to a foreign land or maybe climb Mount Everest. The fully immersive environment that VR creates gives you an experience of a lifetime. Game Over is this week's Business Spotlight. Hi, I'm Eric. And I'm Steph, and we're with Game Over Entertainment. Yeah, so basically you can uh, rent out one of our rooms for typically an hour of game time and you can choose one of over 60 different games or experiences that you go into. Uh, so it's a completely immersive room scale virtual world that you're in where you could do anything from exploring the bottom of the ocean to fighting off hordes of zombies, whatever appeals to you, I guess. Yeah, or of course we have some escape rooms too where you can escape a pyramid or Medusa or uh, pretty much any other thing. We have a new Halloween one coming out too where you can escape in a small little church. We have a bunch of different types of rooms. So we have ones that would appeal for people who want to come in and share the rooms. So if you don't necessarily want to play all the time or if you have grandma and grandpa who are a little bit more hesitant to come in and play something in virtual reality because of the technology, uh, they can still be part of the fun by playing some of our games like Doodle VR, which is Pictionary, and this way they can still kind of interact with it in the same way. We do also have games that are exclusive to those rooms that are more uh, different types of titles that are designed more to watch and have fun watching. So you do have a headset that you put on your face. It's going to cover just the top part of your face here. And because most of our systems are wireless, you'll have a little bit of battery pack. Very similar to this little thing here. And uh, you have it on your face and you can interact with your environment with controllers. We don't just concentrate on gaming because gaming is a very small part of what we do. We have stuff that's experience based. So if you want to travel somewhere, we did have um, a father who unfortunately had Alzheimer's and he couldn't travel with his daughter where he wanted to go. So he wanted to go to the CN Tower, and the CN Tower was just obviously out of reach, wasn't able to go, but they were able to go on that trip in Google Earth and still be able to stand in the same place and still have that experience together. It, it's a way to do something that you can't do yourself, like climb up Mount Everest. Yeah. You know, you're probably not gonna go do that, but do you wanna see what the view from the top of Mount Everest is? Mm -hmm. Or go on the space station. We had, a, we had an older lady that came in and she really was obsessed with space, but obviously space travel is probably not going to be accessible in her lifetime. So we stuck her on a space station and she got to go and climb around and look at Earth from a different perspective. We do have a variety of multiplayer games as well as single player games, and you can play the multiplayer games by yourself. So you don't need to have someone come and play the multiplayer games with you. You can also link up with people all around the world and be able to uh, interact that way. If you're looking for more information, uh, check out our website at gameovr.ca and we look forward to seeing you guys down here. Stephanie Cordova is here to help us get our homes more organized with Cut the Clutter. Today's tips are all about your pantry and food storage. If your pantry is stressing you out, there are many things you can do to get it organized and enjoyable to use. Preparing food for your family can be fun and enjoyable, healthy and budget effective with some improvements to the pantry. There is a study from Princeton Neuroscience that states that when we live in clutter and overwhelm, we tend to grab for snacks that are unhealthy, whereas a clean and tidy space tends to be correlated with healthier eating. If this is your first time doing your pantry, take everything out and donate any foods that you've decided that you do not like. We all buy foods to try and something where the answer is a hard no, but we don't want to get rid of it because we just spent money on it, donate those items. 
In St. Albert, there is a Facebook group that allows you to even donate your open food to those in need, as long as you have a character reference to vote for, for you that you wouldn't give away bad food. So by collecting all the unwanted food and putting them aside for the food bank, you are left with only things you will eat. Now sort your items into like categories. For example, your canned goods, any sides, any drinks, and of course your condiments. If your pantry is deep, you can get totes or containers that will act as drawers so that you don't lose the items in the back of the cupboards or shelves. This is how items go past their expiry and are easily forgotten. Having all the same containers or containers that look the same with labels will also help everyone in the family maintain your pantry. It's easier to stay organized when the space is organized to start with. By knowing what you have, you can shop your pantry for meals so are you, you are using what you buy. Shop your freezer and fridge to make meals and use your friend Google to give you inspiration. A search such as easy healthy meals using ground beef and rice may give you something different your family will love that uses ingredients you have on hand. Cutching. Also, by keeping like items with like items, you know what you have on hand for duplicates so you don't buy something without knowing if you already have it. When you use the last item on your list, put it on your grocery list. There are such wonderful apps like Wonderless that you can use to keep your grocery list current. By keeping a chalkboard or a whiteboard in your pantry, your family members can add to the list of things that need to be replenished. Don't buy so many things on sale that it fills your pantry and makes it lack motivation to use. Chances are the sales will come back again before you use all that you have anyway. Keep your boxes together. By stacking the tallest to shortest, Sometimes the illusion of organized achieves the goal of organized for some items. Remove all the outer packaging. For example, keep a tote for snacks that include granola bars, apple sauces, cookies, puddings, etc. Having loose packaging makes it look less organized, limits how you store your items, and makes it difficult to see what you have. And before grocery shopping again, see what you can use with what you have on hand. Happy meal planning and enjoy the fruits of your labor in your pantry. As always, we welcome Michelle Parker with Let's Get Fit. Today, I want to take a few moments to talk to you about workout intentions. No, I'm not talking about whether you intend to work out today or not. I'm talking about setting your intentions within your workout. I'm even going to go so far as to suggest two intentions. The first is a little bit more overarching. Think about why you work out. Perhaps it's for mental health reasons. Maybe it's to keep up with your kids in the park. Or perhaps you're on a journey to lose weight by shedding off some fat. That's intention number one, to remember why you started. Intention number two, what do you want to accomplish within that specific workout? So for example, if you want to focus on greater core stability, to reduce your risk of slips, trips and fall this winter, then focus in on your core engagement. No matter your move, actually think about how you can engage your core. So for example, with our TRX, while I may be working out my biceps, I can also be engaging my quads, hamstrings and glutes, as well as my abdominal region, as I maintain that plank formation throughout my bicep range, okay? So maximize your, your workouts by focusing in on your tensions within your movements. Now this week's challenge is the plank. We're gonna come back down the ground, I'll tell you a little bit more. All right, so this week's challenge is the plank. So what I challenge you to do is to set your timer for two minutes and then plank. So focus on your entire core region, that is from your rib cage to just above your knees and squeeze. Actually focus on engaging your quads, hamstrings, glutes, and that abdominal region. If you drop before your timer sounds, note the time and repeat tomorrow. Aiming to beat your time, even just by one or two seconds, one and two seconds is still an improvement. Let us know how you did in the comments below. Everyone from TV7.ca, I'm Michelle Parker. Have a great day. And here's Crystal Lucier, keeping an eye on our proverbial Benjamins with financial focus. I want money. So you want to start a business. What's your first step? First of all, congratulations. 
Your first step should be a discussion with a business professional. You'll want to discuss things like registering a name, whether you should be incorporated or not, how you're going to pay any employees that you may have, and of course, how you're going to pay yourself. You're going to want to prepare a list of questions and schedule a free consultation. Here at Preferred Tax, we chat with you over coffee to find out what your goals are, create next steps plan, and discuss your options for grant funding, business planning, and any other professionals that you may need to be in contact with. Feel free to reach out either to us or to your general professional that you typically use. These discussions should be had before you register and before you're actually performing business. I'm Crystal Lucier with Preferred Tax Solutions, and this is TV7.ca. I want money. We thank you, St. Albertans, as always, for tuning in. That is it for another week. Now, if you have any community events or news you'd like to share with our viewers, please send us an email at news at tv7.ca as well. Any advertising ideas, any marketing ideas, give us a shout. Once again, news at tv7.ca. We will definitely be able to get back to you. I'm Paul Hukalak. Have an amazing week.